Welcome back to the Humble Marksman channel, the only gun channel here on YouTube with that BDE. That's right, Big Dad Energy. You remember when you first tiptoed through your child's room carefully avoiding the toys and if you stepped on one, we're super quiet about it. And now if you step on one in the dark, you cuss loudly, kick the toy across the room and it makes even more noise than the cussing. Yeah, that's where we've come. So if that's you, hit the like button. I'm David and this is the CZ Checkmate Parrot. Ever since I started competing in open division in USPS, say you guys have been asking for a video about the CZ Checkmate because the Checkmate is one of the more budget friendly ways to get into open division competition. Now I hesitate to make this video because it's going to come across as negative. It's not because most of you guys don't shoot competition and I'm just going to tell you facts about this gun that everybody who shoots competition with this pistol will agree with but some of you guys are touchy and are not going to like what I have to say. It's a great gun. I really like this gun. If I were going to buy a version of this gun, it'd be this one. But this is not a modern open pistol this day and age, and we'll tell you why. Basically, this is buying an open gun on a payment plan because you have to put about $1,000 in upgrades into this pistol before it begins to be a competitive pistol in 2023. That's not to say that I haven't been beat by checkmates because I have, and I'm sure I'll get beat by checkmates into the future because the shooter ultimately wins the match, not the gun. But I promise you those guys who are shooting the checkmate are working harder for it. First things first, let's talk about the box. This is a gun that would retail routinely for over $3,000. It is a discontinued gun as I'm sure one of my commenters is going to be quick to point out. When this gun was around, it routinely sold for over $3,000. And the box that it comes in is just like a bloated plastic case like any other CZ would come in. Which for those of you guys who don't compete, that's fine. It just sits in the closet. But for those of us who fly around the country with pistols to compete with, you can't even secure it to fly with. So you're gonna have to get another box to fly with it. Inside the box, you'll find this pistol. This is the open configuration. It also has a standard or limited configuration. Three magazines and one big stick. So the problem with this gun really flows from the fact that CZ's trying to be everything to everyone with this pistol and not just letting it be an open gun. I realize in Europe there are different laws, so people maybe wanna be able to flex from open division into standard division. But in the United States, we're pretty much only gonna buy a gun like this if we're intending to shoot open division. I I've never met anybody who shoots a checkmate with the irons on. It's always in open trim. And the reason that's a problem is it affects a number of features on the pistol. Now in standard division in IPSC, there is a box that all the standard division guns have to fit in. So in that regard, you get this rather small magwell and the safeties are rather small in order to fit the standard division box. In USPSA, our guns don't have to fit in a box in either of those divisions. So the magwells are much larger and the safeties are basically large paddles that you can bear down on and help keep the muzzle down. The magazines that they're using, since they're based around IPSC standard division magazines, are undersized for open division. So the magazines come their 320 rounders and 126 rounder. All of those magazines are about three rounds light from what people typically compete with in open division. Further, the mag bodies themselves are kind of dodgy, especially the big stick because CZ doesn't make a proper open magazine. They basically, at the factory YouTube, this is a factory trim pistol. At the factory, they're welding two mag tubes together and you can see the visible weld seam on the gun. Not to worry too much about it because MBX is now making magazines for the wide body CZs. So you can get proper capacity magazines for for the checkmate to compete with, which is all to the good. Now, obviously you've noticed that all of the aluminum bits on the gun are anodized in just these outrageous colors. And these colors are absolutely perfect. I desperately love all these colors, especially that magenta slide racker. That is fantastic. The cobalt blue, royal blue, whatever you want to call that optics riser and the orange grips and the green magwell red trigger. All that is really, really cool. The problem with that is that if you are in the United States, almost none of those parts will probably stay on the the pistol when you're done with it. The optic that comes on the pistol is a Seymour system slide ride, which was like a cutting edge optic. And it's still very reliable, has a huge window, but it just rides about a mile above the slide and it extends all the way to the end of the slide. Yes, I know it doesn't mount on the slide, but it is called a slide ride. This optic is very good, very reliable. You can change the modules out to get whatever dot size you happen to want to get, and they make like all of them. All open shooters generally use the miniature reflex red dots now so that they ride much closer to the slide. The window is about the same size, but it's wider at the bottom, which is a more useful window size. The slide racker, similarly, this, I really love this color purple, like purple anodizing seriously is one of my favorite 
favorite colors, but this purple anodized slide racker would probably go as well. You notice it's on the right side of the pistol because the way it's shaped, it actually is in danger of beating up your thumbs if it's on the side of the gun with your thumb. So it has to go to the outside unless you get a larger bent offset slide racker, which is more common on typical open guns. And not to mention that the detent that's in the slide racker doesn't work great because you'll see it flew off while I was shooting it at the range. The safeties, as I mentioned, are a little bit small and the geometry of the Checkmate safeties is kind of not as good as the 2011. You can, it's just more difficult to actuate them to flip them on to the up position. And they're just a little bit more challenging to sweep down. Ultimately, I'd probably go with an oversized safety that's easier to activate and deactivate for this gun. The grips are absolutely gorgeous. They actually provide a decent amount of traction, but they're just a little bit thin. If you've got larger hands, then it's probably gonna be a challenge for you. The back of the grips is a little bit slippery, so I would definitely look at putting some palm swell grips on the gun to help give more surface to hold on to. As I mentioned, the magwell is a little bit small, and while I'm at it, I'd probably swap out a magwell to something more typical of a US style open gun. That's almost all the complaining I have to do about the Checkmate. There's one more quality of life thing we'll get to in a moment. Let's talk about shooting first. So shooting the gun, let's first start with how the grip is shaped. The checkering on the front and back strap of the gun are absolutely fantastic, better than the Shadow 2. The trigger is better than your buddy Shadow 2 that he keeps bragging about. The trigger from the factory is fantastic. Now this trigger is set up in single action only with about a two pound pull. It's just under or two pound on my gauge. There is just a small amount of wiggle, basically just enough to let you feel that you're on the wall that you stay rested on the wall and pull through. And there's just a very small amount of over travel. And the reset is a little long for a trigger that is as good as this, but very short by everybody else's reckoning. That said, it's not quite as good as a 2011 style gunsmith trigger at the same pull weight. The trigger throw is gonna be a little bit shorter on the 2011. You'll be able to manipulate like the shape, contour, where it lands, all that kind of stuff through the trigger face that you end up selecting. So don't hear me say that like it's a big criticism to this because this trigger is better than about 99% of the guns on the market currently. It's just that in the world of competition pistols, the 2011 trigger is a little bit nicer. But shooting this gun, the cold hammer forge barrel that CZ uses is ridiculously accurate. When I was validating zero, I was very pleased to see clover leaves when I first started at 10 and backing up to 15 and even 20 yards. This gun is hole on hole accurate, which is interesting because unlike the regular CZs that has a bushing, this uh, fancy compensator actually has a cone that locks the edge of the slide up onto the barrel, which is kind of interesting. And you may notice while I have it back that the guide rod for the recoil spring is what keeps the compensator from turning. There is no Loctite that is holding this compensator on. It is held in place by that guide rod that you see there. And putting it side by side with my ultimate racer, I did notice that the muzzle climb was just a little bit more pronounced. I noticed more dot movement. Partially that's gonna come from the higher over the bore optic that I'm able to see more dot movement, but also when I actually slowed it down and looked at it frame by frame, you can see in this photo here that there's maybe about 20% more muzzle climb out of the CZ, but it, this is factory spring that is in this gun right now. The recoil spring, because I took it apart and cleaned it, is very, very strong, way stronger than what you would traditionally want in an open gun. Similarly, the hammer spring's probably a little bit weak because both of those springs together arrest how the slide moves to the rear. Having a heavy hammer spring helps hold the slide locked up while the gun is firing, and then having a lighter recoil impulse means that there's less velocity coming forward on the slide. And to that point, when you look at this picture, you'll see that the CZ has actually closed its slide at peak muzzle lift, which sort of creates a more aggressive downward fall as it flops back into the neutral position and returns to zero. Now, anybody can get used to anything if they shoot it long enough. I didn't have that much time with this pistol. It is a borrowed pistol from my buddy, the Gentleman Gunner here on YouTube. So I noticed that my follow-up shots with the Parrot were coming back a little bit low and I had to kind of slow down my trigger speed in order to maintain tighter groups. This is a 48 ounce pistol so it's not a light pistol by any stretch. The compensator is steel and that kind of contributes to very a muzzle heavy sort of sensation when it's coming down out of recoil it just has more inertia kind of coming down with it. The Ultimate Racer also has a steel comp but 
you can get aluminum or even titanium comps that help reduce the weight out in front. And that's gonna pay benefits on like transitions and things like that. It's just not gonna wanna wobble as much as you move the gun around. So the next two quality of life issues, the first is ammo. Now the magazines that we talked about, they will only accept cartridges loaded up to about a 1150. And for nine major, that's kind of a shorter loading of what nine major usually is, but that doesn't really matter. So the magazines are gonna limit you to a 1150 cartridge length. The barrel that comes in this is going to be built to the CIP standards that they use in Europe and has a very, very short throat, which means if you're shooting nine major in the US, you're probably going to need to get the barrel reamed in order to accommodate cartridge lengths more typical that are used for nine major. And so finally, the last bit that is kind of a quality of life thing, when you actually take the part and clean it and guys, nine major is a really dirty round. It throws a lot of carbon inside the gun. Open guns are so heavily dependent upon slide speed in order to function reliably. So you end up cleaning open guns almost every time you shoot them. You have to unthread the compensator every single time you take the gun apart. But first, let's talk about the field strip. Like every other CZ, you hold the slide slightly out of battery and punch out the slide pin. It'll allow the upper to come off the gun. Pushing forward on the locking lug of the barrel, you can expose the pin that you can capture the recoil spring with. Use the little tool that comes in the box. I didn't find it the first time I field stripped this gun and it was much harder than using the tool. So don't lose that little tool. With the spring captured, you can remove the recoil spring and then you can unthread the compensator in order to get the barrel out of the gun. Usually with a 2011, you can just pull the whole bull barrel straight out the front of the slide and it's just much quicker, much easier. You don't have to take the compensator off every time. But now that the gun's broken down, now we have to clean it. That's where the accuracy oil comes in. What do you do when snake oil's not slippery enough? You make your oil out of accuracy. Modern Spartan Systems Accuracy Oil. I know it sounds silly guys, but hear me out. Keeping an open gun lubricated is a challenge because if you use the heavy grease type stuff, if it gets cold, then that can slow down your slide speed. Or if that oil gets dirty, it attracts a bunch of the carbon buildup that nine majors throwing all over the inside of the gun. It can gum up your slide, slow down the slide and cause malfunctions. Super thin oils are likely to run out the back of the slide really, really quickly. And if the gun starts to dry up, then it's gonna slow down the slide. And you're gonna get malfunctions. Accuracy oil works by putting a deposit onto the metal that lowers the friction coefficient of the stuff, at least that's what they say. All I can tell you is that I put it on my open gun. I left it on for three months, nearly a thousand rounds, and then I was able to clean my gun basically with a paper towel and a Q-tip. Because I coated the inside of the whole gun with accuracy oil, none of the stuff would stick, made cleanup super easy, and it kept the gun running reliably. And I shot in 37 and 40 degree weather, and the gun ran with no problems. I've got a link in a pinned comment with a discount code of THM10 to save you 10% on it. It's pretty darn good stuff. I'll be doing a video on it later. Dripping with accuracy. Modern Spartan Systems Accuracy Oil. So all of that aside, reassembling the gun is a reverse order which you took it apart. But if this were my pistol, ultimately, like I mentioned earlier, I would be spending about a thousand bucks in parts. I'll put a link to my website. I'm not trying to sell you anything. It's just YouTube won't let me put links to gun parts or whatever. And there I put a link with a, a post on my blog about the stuff that I would change to make this gun more competitive in competition. So it's a really cool gun. You can get in at a low basis price, I guess. If you wanna build up an open gun, it is a really good choice. I think that ultimately once you're done the premium between this and a 2011 style pistol is basically gone you'll be spending about the same amount of money but for people who just really really love the cz ergonomics and want to stay in the cz ecosystem it's certainly a good option and this anodizing is absolutely beautiful i really, really love the way it looks. The one thing I can say is I shot this with 124 grain projectiles. Pretty much everybody competes with these with 115 grain because you can get more gas behind the projectile, which makes the comp work harder since it doesn't have popple holes. More gas going through the comp is gonna help keep the muzzle down a little bit. So that's the checkmate. I appreciate you guys and I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks guys.